The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gould. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. And we got the fresh scoop from the IRS about all the new forms, and we're going to keep you totally uh, informed so that you know exactly what's happening. And I'll tell you, here we are uh, in July. We had a wonderful 4th of July, but we're we're absolutely on the second half of the year. And I'm going to tell you, I hope you know what's coming down the pike because things have massively changed and we want to make sure that we keep you abreast. Our phone number here in studio is 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on your cell phone. And you can text us at 3930. If you have any comments, you can talk about anything. I know that... Um, we want to. Uh, we we have all the new farms. We're going to explain about that. And Tiff, you're saying what's happening at the office? Um, oh, and that's Tiffany Fabian and Christopher Fabian. Hey guys. Hey. Hello, hey what's there? Saturday. Um, lots of letters. The IRS is sending out lots of letters about uh, income not matching what's on your return. And specifically, I've been seeing a lot of people that are missing. Uh, stock sales and um, items that are on a, a Schedule D. And so people, like I just helped somebody the other day, and she's like, I'm just going to pay this $3,500. And I said, no, they said that you forgot something from Smith Barney, but the the it's sold for 10000 and the IRS thinks that you got it for free. But really... It you was eleven thousand, and right. so you're going to get a refund. You mean I don't have to pay the thirty five hundred dollars? No, you're going to get yeah, money back after I amend it. Got a ninety six hundred dollar bill, and what he actually ended up owing was like three hundred. Right, right. You know, so so it, the it's lesson really is important. don't just pay it. Chris, Be- what else are you seeing at the office? Um, <clears throat> people who filed amended returns back in April. The IRS still hasn't processed them yet, so you just got to be patient. If you're getting a letter saying you owe money, just show patience. You know, they're going to process the but amended be returns. Diligent. I will yep. tell you, like, uh, I, also the other day in the office, I had somebody that called and said, gee, Esther, you did my tax return, and I never got my refunds. So went online, looked. They had uh, their refunds seized for uh, back student loans. And so if you're still waiting for your refund, go on the IRS and State of New York website, and it'll say, it doesn't tell you who seized it or how it got seized, but it'll tell you that it might have gotten seized. And if you filed a joint return and only one of you owned, had the obligation, on the federal, we can do an... An injured spouse. Right, and get you part of your money back, if right. not all of it. So there's things that we can do, and EG Tax is there for you uh, year-round. Okay, so we the... Um, IRS has just come out with uh, their what do you call it? Uh, Next year's 2018. It's like a it's like a preview of the tax forms. And remember, President Trump really wanted a postcard, and so he said he won, and so he's getting his way. And so, but it's like getting a Mercedes without an engine. <laughs> I was just so you you get to get the car, but then you have to buy the parts to make the car run. Right? It's so funny when you said a preview. I was thinking like when you go to a car show and they show you the latest, greatest new cars to come out. Well, that's sort of in our world what happened. All right. So, so what they really did is, Chris, you want to explain? Sure. They really took the 1040A and the 1040EZ and they to make the president happy. You know, because he is a showman and he want he did win. So he it is it is the size of two postcards, right? Right, right. But then what? So what they did, they made the page one is what's your name, what's your address, and sign here. Page two looks like a little, 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 little tax return. What's your income? A baby tax return. Yeah, baby tax return. Do you have a W-2? Yep. Okay, you can just do this. But if you have any other type of income... You have to do a Schedule One, which is for other income, that such as Schedule C. To the right. Card, so you right? still have to do a Schedule C, and now you got to do a Schedule One to, to flow put, to the page two of page the postcard. Two of the postcard, and then what happens if you have children? 
Well, then if you have children, there's Schedule 2. Schedule 3 is for the but, non... And sc- on Schedule 2, is that all it is, is for the children? Uh, it's for is people with child- some other forms of taxes, such as on a child's unearned income. So that's where... The, what, what if you the, had child and independent care? Where does that go? Schedule that's Schedule three. 3. Oh, good! So credits go on Schedule 3, but yeah. you still have to do all of the... The other, uh, the, forms, the 2441 right? or the, you know, the child tax credit. Okay. So they and just. So what goes on Schedule 5? Well, Schedule 4 is where the taxpayers will add up certain taxes, such as self employment tax, uncollected Social Security, Medicare tax. Schedule 5 is your payments, your withholdings, your estimates, the money you paid with an extension. So you would always usually have a Schedule 5. Right. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's interesting because I looked up several comments. Uh, One says, it is the size of a postcard, but it's more complicated than ever. And and it's absolutely true. So what happens when you get this, you look at this little form, you now have to attach a schedule. And to the schedule, you attach the forms that prove what goes on the schedule that then gets carried forward to the postcard. Yep. Right. Oh, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, we're making it easy. Uh-huh. Well, Not. it's interesting. They, I, I they think said you that said they it eliminated right. eliminated lines, but then they added all these extra six forms and 50 lines. Yep. <laughs> So. And and I think you're right when you said, you know, Trump was a showman. And so this was all right. a smoke I mean, and mirrors. Right, show a postcard. Right. But in order to make the Mercedes run, you got to put in an engine and you have to put in the tires. transmission. you got to put a transmission in and you got to put in, and then it's a car. But just the little body is not going to do the, the but job. But you know what I noticed it doesn't say? What? Is your, how about your itemized deductions where you can still itemize the 20% pass through? Oh, it's all on there. Those are all there. They're all there, Chris. Okay. Yeah, they're all there. Uh, because the pass through is going to be an adjustment. And well, it's, it's before the AGI. So, I no, mean, it's did after they just. The AGI. Right, that's what I mean. Uh, after, sorry. But where so I mean, when there's right. a form well you know what it is it's just the preliminary, preliminary. so there could and be they ask actually are asking for comments you know <laughs> on it so uh if you want to look at it you can go uh to irs.gov right? and and i think um on our website tim was going to put it up and so so if you want to look at the postcard but then all of the schedules that attach to the postcard uh they haven't made up yet so we're, but we're giving you the previews. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, 930 on a cell phone. Text us at 3930. I'm going to go to the phones and talk to Ted. To Ted. Hey, Tom, Ted, how can we help you? Hello, Ted. Yes, Esther. Hi. Hi. I'm nearing 70 and a half in a few years, and I have retirement uh, accounts in like six different places. Okay. My question was, how does the government know if I met my minimum distribution or didn't meet my minimum distribution? They know, don't they, Chris? They, what happens, each one of your retirement accounts have to do what's called a Form 5498. And, and, you, and you should get a copy of that They send a year. copy to you right. in an IRS. So then they send it to the IRS. The IRS knows your age. They have a computer program that adds up all your 5498s. They know what your total amount is in there as of 1231. They can do the math, and away you go. So there's a, the Form 5498, which is reported to you and to the taxing agencies, Ted. Okay. And Good question, though. I thought. And, and if so, they also know that if I decide to take all the funds out of one out of six, they'll figure that out? Yeah, because really they come up with... They, they have the actuarial tables that say Ted is X amount of years old, so this is the amount based upon his total um, uh, IRAs and, uh, and pe- uh, pensions. This is how much he should be taking out. This is his required minimum distribution. And it's very simple for them to, uh, to compare that against what was actually withheld. And, Ted, real fast, your 401Ks are different than your IRAs. So if you have IRAs, you have to take a minimum distribution from your IRAs and then a minimum distribution from your 401Ks. You cannot combine those minimum distributions. Right, all based upon 1231 of the previous year. That's good to know. Okay. Okay. Oh. Thanks, Ted. 
Have a great day. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 and a cell phone. Our phone our phone number, I mean our, our text is 3930. And we're gonna take a short break. We'll be back with your calls on the other side. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady. I'm doing the, the mamba here. Uh, from EG Tax, I have Tiffany Fabian, Christopher Fabian here in studio, and we're talking about uh, things you should look for, things you should change, things you should modify before January. And of course, we were talking about the changes in the, the new uh, proposed tax form, which is going to look like a um, postcard, except that now there's how many Ish. extra schedules, Chris? At least six. Six extra schedules, okay? So, and a lot of, and the, the other thing is, not only are there extra schedules and extra forms, but unfortunately, there are some new and very complicated deductions. Right, right. pass through. And pass through, and mm -hmm. some things that people are used to doing that they can't do anymore. Right. And the then the state of New York is really in a conundrum because they don't know what to do about the $10,000 cap for the state and local taxes. So uh, there's that too. But as soon as we hear it, we will let you know. That's right. right. All right, so let's talk about some big changes. First of all, outside salespeople. Now remember, you only have July, August, September, October, November, and December to s fix these things. Outside salespeople, why should they care? Because no longer, when you itemize, can you take the 2106, which is business expenses and related expenses, so they won't be able to deduct, deduct those items on so their if Schedule you're, you're, A. if you incur $20,000 selling widgets that you used to be able to take as an itemized deduction, you can't take it anymore. So you really need to have this talk to your employer so that he puts you on an accountable plan, which means what, Chris? That you have to turn in your mileage log, you have to turn in your receipts, and then they, in turn, would you write wanna. you... I, that's extra work for me. <laughs> right. But uh, do you want to pay tax, or do you want to save money? Wait, let's and face that's... it. If you're in the 22% uh, bracket, and you're losing a $20,000 deduction, you're going to pay, on the federal alone, an extra $4,400. Yep. Right? That's so, right. So, I mean, some things are just worth it. But th here's the thing. The employers don't even have a handle yet on what's going to be deductible, what's not going to be deductible on their own returns. That's right. Exactly. So, if you're an employer with employees who are out selling and you need help with that, give EG Tax a call. We, we do not charge. We just want to help you. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. charge to do work, but we don't charge to talk, right? <laughs> That's right, because so, knowledge really is important. power, and you want to start preparing and making the decisions. Because, you know, one thing that the tax rates all dropped, so everybody was noticing more in their paycheck, but there's all these behind-the-scenes things that can affect the answer when you file your return. That's true. And, That's yeah. true. and you ought to do on Monday, pull out your pay stub. And give give us a call, and we'll give you a mid course correction, like how your refund or balance due is going to shake out now that they've given you more money up front. Because really, in order for the no money at, up front as, in your paycheck to have worked out, would mean that your tax bill dropped on the back end. If you're getting money up front and the tax bill didn't drop on the back end, like for instance, because you're an outside salesperson, then you're gonna end up owing money. So now's the time you need to- Now, one person, correct. you know, before tax, when I was doing people's taxes during tax season, we would look at where they were gonna be for 18. And a big winner, in my opinion, is um, people who had kids under the age of 17 because they got that extra child tax credit going, expanding to 2000, which is really, really beneficial. Right, that's yep. true, and but only fourteen hundred dollars of it uh, is refundable. But they also lose the personal exemptions, exemptions. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. So they're gaining, but they're losing. Right. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone. All right. How about companies? Com first thing, I if if you have a company and it's a C corp, you really have to say to yourself why. Right. 
right? Because you're double, you're paying double taxes. You're paying taxes on the corporation, yep. and your when you take the money out, if you want the money, you're going to pay taxes again. Right, and that's not it because that's not a subtraction from the company, so you can't use that as a deduction against right. the income. And so, a lot of times, uh, I was just with somebody the other day, and I, I was trying to explain to them about the pass-through deduction and the eleven twenty. Uh, S and everything. And he says, oh, well, that's what my accountant does. But you know what? You have to talk to your accountant. I don't care if you use EG Tax or somebody else. Make sure you make that phone call to find out about just why are you a C Corp yep. as opposed to an 1120S. Right. But I would, I mean, I would say find out, I ask questions about your tax return. How many people, new clients come in and you say, why did you do this? I don't know. What about this? How come you didn't? I don't know, because my accountant didn't. Ask questions. It's your tax return. Find out, you know, see what you can do, you know. Even if you have a bookkeeper, find out and ask questions. And, well, and, I, I think Chris get, is... And get a second opinion. Yeah. And review it. Yeah. I mean, I had some a new corporation come in, and it was the two sisters owned the company. And I'm looking at the tax return of, of the corporation, and I said... Why is mom listed as a 51% of the corporate owner? She's not any owner, is she? No. I mean, so that was a big mistake on a tax return. Yep. I mean, and, and that's just a simple little one, but you could be missing out on deductions right. and, and how planning. Hard, like, let's, let's say that somebody's got uh, a C-Corp. All right, he's doing a, a 1120 tax return. And let's say he's on a, a fiscal year and he's not cash basis, he's accrual. I mean, what y your accountant has done has made it so complicated that you can't, you almost can't understand it, right? Yeah, that's right. So to move to cash basis is really, the IRS has just, uh, under, under Trump, he has made it so it's much easier to be cash basis as opposed to accrual. And Esther, it's isn't about it about becoming cash basis? Isn't it true that there used to be a time when some businesses many years ago had to be accrual, right? Right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And he just, they just uh, lifted that, they lifted that restriction. Okay, gotcha. So a lot more business can be cash basis, which means that the money that comes in is income and the bills you pay are deductions right, and these, and then the other thing to move from a, a C corp to an eleven twenty s, you do a form twenty five fifty three. It's just like a postcard. It's a little short form, and a CT six for New York State, and poof, you're you save money. That seems pretty easy and smart. But the most important thing, I think, that ask questions and find out if this is where you should be, and it's not very difficult. And then the other thing is, uh, one of my other clients, um, they had several sports boxes, you know, and for entertainment. They And can they deduct that anymore, Chris? Nope. Yikes. I mean, entertainment is not deductible anymore. So those of you guys that are, uh, uh, are eating lunch right now with a prospective uh, person you're trying to sell something to, and you pick up the tab, it's not deductible anymore. So... Um, Take back the hamburger because <laughs> or make them pay for it themselves. Go because Dutch. Only uh, basically the only thing that's deductible from a business standpoint is when you're entertaining your own staff, and only half of that's deductible. So, uh, so those restrictions you really need to get a handle on. Wow! Right? Yes, yeah, it totally changed the ball game. Okay, but the good thing is, is the pass through. Mm -hmm. So explain that. Well, if if your income is under, and I'm going to be off a little, three hundred thousand, then you you get a twenty percent subtraction of income after your adjusted gross income of the net profit on on a business rental, right? right. Corporation, Re real estate, yep. REIT, eleven twenty yes, right? Yep. So if your net profit will say is fifty thousand dollars. And your adjusted gross income is two hundred thousand. You have a ten thousand dollars subtraction. Right, and if you're in the twenty-two percent bracket, it saves you twenty-two hundred dollars. Right, right. Yep. So that's that's something that goes into the the planning on the left hand side. Now, here's the sad part: if you have rental property that's throwing a loss, 
the loss offsets the gain For so the that it reduces the pass through. So again, these are things you need to plan about before tax time because you you really don't want your rental property to operate at a loss. Of course, they're going to let you add back the depreciation though. Right. You know, so those are things that you're you you don't want to end up with a loss if at all you can help it because it'll affect the pass through, so, which many of these people are I was, really planning on. Yes, ma'am. I was thinking Larry from Georgia. He has real estate companies, so this no a real estate. A re- he, he's well, he's, he's self employed. He's right. So this might be something. Well, all realtors, um, if they, it, you know, making a net profit, a landlord are, are going me, to end up with. Uh, the, on their bottom line, if they make money, twenty percent deduction. Right. So you want to plan that, and a, and a lot of the depreciation uh, restrictions have been loosened. So that's another benefit for you, right? Yep. I'm Esther Galias, the tax lady from EG Tax eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone, and you can text us at thirty nine thirty. And we're going to, I think, Frank, what time? Pretty soon break? Yeah. We're going to take a, we're going to break for the news. We'll, we'll talk to you on the other side. From Mambo to Disco. That's, I love this song. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We are trying to tune you up for January because January is too late. You need to look at your pay, your pay stub and see how much money you've had withheld. Make sure you put money into your pension plan, especially if you're in a, uh, a pension plan with a, a match, match from your employer. If you are you have a business, whether it's a C Corp or an S Corp, there's all kinds of changes with that. You wanna check with your accountant or EG tax, we wanna help you. And so now here comes the other thing that people think about the, the itemize. Itemizing is still in. Yep, I was gonna mention really quickly, if you don't mind, don't forget October 13th is the Financial Buzz uh, seminar that we're doing at um, Eastern Hills Mall at the Buzz Station there. And, and we're gonna teach you some of these changes. Exactly, well. and so don't forget to go to our website to register or call 632-7886. Russ Gullo will be there talking about real estate exchanges. Dennis Kitchen talking about bankruptcy. Um, Mr. Boron talking about education and ways to save and plan for your kids going to college. Jeff Katz talking about college planning. No, not Estate college. planning. Estate, estate planning. Estate planning. Oh, whoops, that's what I meant. I just <laughs> talked about college. Tim Eliason, healthcare, Medicare, the marketplace, and Esther will be on shedding some more light on this topic right. of uh, well, the, 2019. The change in the tax law is just unbelievable because 18. if you if you just rely on the postcard and you don't know about those six schedules boy you could really shoot yourself in the foot one of the one of the changes is a new family credit right, right. chris yep if you're claiming someone over the age of 17 there's a new $450 credit for claiming that person right and so, again that's found on schedule 3 right <laughs> Supposedly, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> so you got the you got the postcard, then you attach the schedule, then you attach the form well, that does the work. Now wait, how many, especially in New York State, but I've seen the federal now say, "Hey, you don't have this form. How many people's refunds are going to be delayed now because they didn't use the they schedule did, one, or they didn't?" If, you know, because one of the things uh, when you did a ten forty, the long form. Every line was on there, yep. and it gave you kind of a, I wonder what a premature withdrawal is, you know, things like that nature. Now you have to go to the schedule to find the line, then you find the form to fit the the situation, right? Crazy. But we'll, but we'll help. 
Uh, okay, let's talk about itemizing. Medical is still deductible, yeah. but you got to be smart because let's say you're a single person and your standard deduction is going to be twelve thousand dollars. Obviously, loading up your these areas that have limitations, such as medical and uh, and uh, Taxes, charity, you charity. know, where you can get big bigger bangs for your buck. Load them all up in in each particular year, so that maybe one year you do the standard deduction, one year you itemize, one year. But so medical is still deductible, yep. which includes glasses, dentists, chiropractors, physical uh, therapy, home care, and medical is still at the seven point five threshold, which is really good. So you only have to get over nursing that nursing homes, mm-hmm. and then of course on the state of New York, they take out that six, make you pay that six percent bed tax, which is. Did, yeah, okay. Sorry, yeah. I just was speaking of medical. Tim yesterday showed me how, because these insurance companies have to put in how much they want to increase, and New, New York their, 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 their costs. Cost. Okay. And New York State said, "Well, nope, we're not allowing you to go up twenty five percent. We're only allowing you to go up ten percent." A lot of these health insurance companies now are adding a surcharge. So to get around it. To get around it. So your 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 plan may only go up two percent or five percent, but there may be a ten percent surcharge. And this is all supposedly because in starting in two thousand nineteen, they're getting rid of the mandate for having health insurance. Mm-hmm. Well that is true. So, I mean it's out of the tax law. Two thousand nineteen, yep. there won't be any penalty. The penalty is still in effect though through two thousand and eighteen. Yep, yep. Right. But uh, and that speaking of that if you're somebody that is looking for help with health insurance, uh, Tim Eliason heads up EG Health Connect, and he can help you. That's a no-charge service that we will help you with. And he really and his team go to the nth degree to make sure that they fit the plan mm-hmm. to yep. the person with affordability. Yep, he makes sure he does a health itinerary when he sits with you, and so he has a really good picture, a road map of what would best fit your circumstances. All right, So and so obviously if you're paying your own health insurance, that's also a medical expense. Mm-hmm. Um, nursing home, anything to alleviate a specific medical problem is is a potential Except for legal for medical. marijuana. It's because it's illegal <laughs> It's federal. illegal federal. Right. Yep. Uh, all right, taxes. So... The state of New York knows that they're under the eight ball because the taxes are being capped at 10000 So that includes your state sales taxes, your state withholding, your property taxes, any foreign taxes paid. That is being capped at 10000 I will tell you, if you're single, how much is it capped at, Chris? Uh, if you're single, it's still 10000 And if you're married? Salt. Married, 10000 So that's the biggest marriage penalty ever. <laughs> yep. And if very you think, well said. I'm going to go Very well said. I mean, if you're in the process of getting a divorce, hurry it up. Okay. Right, because if you're thinking, oh, we'll get away with it by doing married separate, uh-uh. we each get 5, 10. 000. Nope, then it drops down to five. Right. So you, if, if you're in the process of getting divorced, get it done before December so you both get 10000 Well, wh- And actually, well, it's a, that's a gigantic uh, reason to get a divorce. Actually, you want to hurry it up, too, if you're the person who's... Pain. Paying alimony. Right, because alimony in 19 won't be deductible. Right, 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 right. So yet another reason you might want to hurry it up. Right. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. We're talking taxes, mid-course correction. We want to help you. Whether you've gotten, you've sent uh, your your tax return in, you haven't gotten your refund. State of New York is notorious for holding up refunds. Many people call and say, I don't know where my refund one is you check with the state of new york oh we want your w-2 yeah and if you don't respond they won't give you your money i I, am no somebody i was talking to somebody yesterday and they're they did married separate and the wife was getting examined and so they went and switched the husbands in order to 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 shoot it down because the wife didn't get it in so you just sometimes call us if you haven't gotten your new york state refund and so you we can look into it and figure it out okay so taxes we just talked about so if you're single it's ten thousand if you're a married couple it's ten thousand 
talk about a travesty, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, I never this thought about that's F- bad. Because, you know, you take a look at the standard Yuck. deduction for a single person is 12. Jeez. It's going to be easy for single people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The, the people that are really going to get penalized are the married couple, right? So get divorced. Uh, only kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right. Interest. Interest is deductible on your mortgages mm-hmm. per normal, mm-hmm. right? No matter how much you have and your home equity credit lines, provided it was used to it make improvements. improvements. Right, make home, home improvements. So, so that's good. So if we had, if we had somebody that was single and their taxes are capped at 10000 and they paid uh, $5,000 in interest and home equity, now they're at fifteen. they they're going to itemize, yeah. right? And charity is definitely deductible, same as, as before. As a matter of fact, you were limited before to 50% of your adjusted gross income. Now it's 60%. And, yeah. But here's the thing. If you're a senior and you got to do your RMD and you're not going to be able to itemize, make sure you do the rollover. Right, if you're somebody that wants to contribute to have the, your, the charity, have your charity, have your minimum distribution go directly to, to the, the charity. charity. So it's got to be a trustee to the charity rollover, but and, then it's not taxable to you. It's not deductible. You weren't going to get and, the benefit, but it fulfills your RMD requirement. I was going to say, be careful. I know we've had, I think, three or four people call about one big time broker say. Oh well, yeah. You we're gonna open up a checking account for you, and then the ch- money will come right from your checking account to go to huh. the charities. No, no, it's got to go right from the broker to, to the charity. Your the name charity. cannot be the person as the payor. Right, and when they issue the ten ninety nine R, then there's a special code there that shows that it's a qualified uh, distribution for it to yep. a charity. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. We have Debbie waiting. Hey, Deb, how can we help you? Well, thank you. Um, we had a question. Is it better to sell our house this year or next year? We had heard that there's a three point something percent tax leaving next year. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so uh, do, is this your personal residence? Yes. How long have you lived in it, Deb? 22 years. Yeah. So if you lived in a home, your personal residence, and it was not rental property, two out of the last five years, your gain up to, if you're if married filing a joint return, up to a half a million is tax-free. So you're not going to have to worry. Now, is there something with uh, with the Obamacare tax that was tacked on that's supposed to But no, your home is going to be completely tax-free. Right. There is there the is Ob- a- the Obamacare penalties. Those two penalties, as far as I know, stay in effect yep. uh, through the change for the making tax too law. much money. Right. I should for making over. But not 50, for you. But not, not for the, for the sale, sale of, of your personal house. You'll be fine. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you sell way, it now or the next year. Market is hot. I would never. I mean, you never know about market conditions. We know right now the market is hot. Oh. I, you know, make hay while the sun shines. I would. I would absolutely uh, list my house right now because it's so I know it was beneficial. Dry. Plus, the interest rates are low. I know. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome, Debbie. Thanks for calling. Okay. Bye. All right. Yeah, Deb. What were you saying? I said good. She had asked a good question, but I said I was driving around our neighborhood, and I think a house sold in like a week. Right, right Chris. Yeah, the market is hot. It is hot. I will tell Just you like if the you. That's true. Uh, but if you are somebody that's contemplating, you've been looking. You say, I don't know. If, you think? It, first of all, the house is going to sell for much more than you ever thought it was. Mm-hmm. And if it should sell, especially in that one hundred and twenty thousand dollar range yeah. or lower, it's, there's sometimes like. It might even offers. might even be a good year for us to get a new corporate location. I think we found one. We, I know because somebody so. was listening That's to the right. radio we, show. We were complaining that we were in a we small were, cramped. We could find uh, a new corporate office, and those of you that come out to our trans our, our not Niagara Falls Boulevard office, you know, parking is terrible. We think we found something with a lot of parking. So excited! So keep your fingers crossed. We hope. We hope. We hope. We hope. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in the cell phone. We're going to break, uh, take a short break. We'll be back with your calls on the other side. I thought he was going to have us I do love this music. Great dancing. 
All right, we can dance. We can dance on the top of the desk here. I'm Esther Goli. It's the tax dance. lady from EG to? Tax. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And you can text us at 3930. And we're talking mid course corrections and things you should think about. Uh, you know, with the charity, the other thing is if, you're, if you are an itemizer, you can get more bang for your buck, maybe one year doing the standard and uh, loading up your charitable giving. Casualty losses are still deductible as long as it's a federally declared disaster area, like the flooding up in Lake Ontario was last year. Yep. For those of you that had Hurricanes. flooding, I hope you uh, put it on your tax return. And then miscellaneous itemized deductions for gambling are still deductible. And we talked about it the other day. Now the the going to gamble is going to also be right. deductible. Right, so up to your, 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 your mileage, your airfare, your up hotels, to your up, up to your, your winnings. winnings. Right. Hmm. So that's an interesting thing. Okay, let's go back to the phones. We're going to talk to Pete in Hamburg. Hi, Pete. How can we help you, sir? Oh, hi. Um, I'm going to pull over to the side. Okay. Good boy. Yeah. We don't want you to smash your car up, Pete. No. Um, okay. Um, can you hear me better? I, I can hear you great. What's your question? My, my mother-in-law passed away June uh, 4th. And so we're still, we didn't do anything yet. Okay. And the house is given to my wife. So she inherited it, or did they give it to her prior to grant your mother-in-law passing? Well, it's in the will that she gets it. All right, so she inherited it. Okay. Being a lawyer, or we haven't done anything. Okay. The money is still in the bank. Uh, sure. You know, her checking account is under with my wife. Okay. But we were wondering. I was wondering if we if we sold the house before we settle, or as as she's the trustee. Okay, so the thing is, if is she the only person that inherited? She's the only one, right. Okay, well, the, if it's her house and she sells it, you know, then the gain, she's going to get, get it appraised b before you, you list it because right now, whatever the fair market value was at the date of your mother-in-law's death, which was just last month, and you put it on the market and sell it before the end of the year, in effect, you're going to have no gain because you get a stepped-up basis on that house. Right. Either way, whether it goes through the estate right. or to through his your wife. Right. Oh, so it doesn't matter. Right. So, well, we're, we're planning to sell it in the spring of next year because it needs a little repair. Okay. Is that a good idea? Well, you know what I would do? I'd get me a good realtor uh, to come over and say... Uh, he might say, you know what, Pete, these minor little repairs, it's going to sell without you doing it in a day. Uh, or your, the, the realtor might come in and say, no, Pete, you absolutely should put the money into this house because it needs thus such than the other thing or else it won't sell. I th uh, that, that professional that you would work with, in my opinion, can really help you out and steer you in the right direction. Uh, and we, Judy Lewis uh, advertises Judy with Judy Jack Lewis uh, advertises with us. She's a remarkable uh, realtor uh, at Hunt, and I would suggest you give her a call. And and I know when Chris and I were selling our house a couple of years ago, we had a real estate agent come in and she, with a fresh set of eyes and say, "You need this done. You need this done. You need this done." And it just is eye opening. Right. They, they, it's the their thing, expertise. The thing is, with the market being so hot, though, Pete, you, they might say, you know, it's it's true, it's dated, but if it's all cleaned up and cleaned out, we might be able to get this much. But if you put in a forty thousand dollar kitchen, you might not make your money back. So you you uh, that's where dealing with a a real professional realtor is going to help you out and use their uh, use them as a sounding board. Near, it's right near Nichols. Oh my god. Yeah, I would Hot. talk to a realtor oh now. Oh my gosh, I would. Just maybe. I mean, do you know how much houses are in demand there? Yeah, that's it's the hottest area. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. I mean, why would you pay the bills till over winter? You know, leave it empty. People, you know, you don't I I would absolutely uh, call call a realtor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Hey, thanks for the call, Pete. Yeah, oh. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, well, we, as far as capital gains, you're not going to pay capital gains. You get a stepped up basis because your wife inherited the property. So whatever it's worth now is, is what it's worth when you sell it. Let's say you sell it next month, unless there's a gigantic change in the market in two months, 
that would be your basis now. And so if you sell it, let's say they appraise it at 300000 and you sell it for 300000 there's no gain. Okay, so what if the what's the gain? What if it sells for fifty thousand more than it's worth now? Well, then you got a fifty thousand dollar gain, and that would be a, a long term capital term. gain. That would be a long. Which is favorable, right, right? But then you get to reduce it by your expenses sale. So I think oh. I think Pete that you're going to be a happy man. I mean, I'm sorry about the death of your mother in law, but oh. in this situation, she really is going to bless you. It was a great. It was a great. If you can say a great death, it was a great. Yeah, I mean, not to, if my wife, wife heard me say that. That's, you mean she lived a good life? Yeah. Yeah, 93 and... and yeah. Oh, that's great. Super great. That's great. Hey, thanks for calling, Pete. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Thank you, sir. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 803-0930, 930 star 930 on a cell phone, and we got Daryl. Hey, Daryl, how you ha- how, what's happening, brother? How you doing? I just had a question about is, is uh, child support deductible? <laughs> not only is child support not deductible, but they're making alimony not deductible starting 2019. But um, if you on New York State, if you are a lower income dad and you paid child support, there's a credit on New York State for um, it's an EIC for non-custodial. non-custodial parents. If you're paying it through the New York State collection, mm-hmm. or it comes right out of yeah, but your, your checking account right. through the collection. So there is on New York State a potential for somebody who pays child support. But if, if credit, you're paying it's, maintenance it's, now through a separate decree. Then you still get to deduct your alimony slash maintenance, but child support, no. Yeah. Man, we got to get that changed. I know, Daryl. I know, Daryl. Hey, thanks for calling, buddy. Don't forget about the low income EIC for child support. If you're paying child support through the New York State collection, all right, and it's being taken out of your uh, wages, and your wages are relatively low, Mm -hmm. and you have children that would qualify for an earned income credit because they're living in mom's house. There is a credit on New York State called the uh, non-custodial earned income credit. And if you haven't taken it, you have the ability to get that from New York State Mm -hmm. if you amend your return. Okay. Very good. We're good? Am I good? Yeah, good, Uh, of course. Okay, the other thing is uh, when you're itemizing... Um, miscellaneous itemized deductions. We talked about gambling. That's still in there, yep. right? You know, going back to charity, everybody during the summer gets rid of all their old stuff. Take good notes. Take pictures of yep. what it is. Go to the Salvation Army's website. They have a nice log because that's still you still can use that. Right. You know, I had someone call the other day and say, "Oh, I gave forty thousand dollars worth of stuff." I said, "Did you get it appraised?" Nope. I said, "Do you have receipts?" Nope. I said, then you have nothing. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> if it's over 5000 you have to attach a, a copy of an appraisal. appraisal. Right. All right, let's go back to the phone. So we have Tim from Niagara Falls. Hi, Mr. Tim. How can we help you, sir? Hey, uh, how's it going, Ms. Gullier? Uh, Good. Good. Listen, um, this may be a little rudimentary. Uh, to me, it's not. Um, I just got done doing um, a pretty long um, prison bid. Um mm-hmm. However, everything's been going very, very well. Um, I was able to land a very, very good job. Good for you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm considered uh, what's called a 1099 employee. Um, and for this uh, first year, I'm a little bit uh, confused. Uh, first of all, I'm making more money than I've ever made in my life, but I, I just don't know how much I should be putting away. Well, here, here's the good thing, question. Tim. You want to make sure, you know, you just got done serving your time, right? Now you want to make sure that you do everything right so you are building on a solid foundation. Exactly. All right, so why don't you, I would suggest you give us, you're in Niagara Falls, we're, our office is on Niagara Falls Boulevard, we're probably seven miles from you uh, as the crow flies down Niagara Falls Boulevard. There's no cost, come on in and we'll show you what expenses can offset that income that you're earning. Are you doing outside sales? Yes. Okay. So your travel, your travel is not deductible if you're an employee, but if you're self-employed and that's what you are, 
okay? Then your travel is deductible to go uh, call on clients. Your, uh, if you have any gifts that you might give to your clients when the, under $25 to facilitate the sale, that's deductible. Uh, your cell phone, if you use it for business, is deductible. You might have an office in your home that you're using to keep track of all your leads and generate your, your marketing strategy. That's deductible. Your all internet. Of, and he'll get privy to the 20% pass-through right, this the, year. That's right. The 20% pass-through will be available to you. And Chris, so what were you saying? what I'd suggest you do is... Come in, we'll kind of do a mock tax return, show you what you need, give you some books to keep track of all your mileage. Actually, you should download our app, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then also you might want to put some money away because if you do a self-employed SEP, that would help you. You want to start thinking, there's a lot of stuff to think. What were you going right. to say, Chris? Good. You're good. And the other thing is uh, you want to set aside like 20% of the money that you're making so that you can pay the federal government and state of New York. It would be at least that much. And we'll set you up on your estimates so you can prepay the taxes so when it's tax time, you're not behind the eight ball. Okay. Now, uh, I pre that's what I was kind of looking for, just a roundabout number. Um, I've been putting around a, uh, 18%, so I'll bump that up a little bit. Um, and now with write-offs, um, I, I thought I heard someone say um, – uh, would internet be? Uh, if you're using it for your business, yes. It would be. Yeah, I use it for uh, like my Wi-Fi. For my and like maybe you just bought a computer or a laptop, mm -hmm. printer, right? Printer, toners, um, you know, paper, postage, everything that's ordinary and necessary for you to make the money as an outside salesperson, Tim, is deductible. Plus, maybe you just bought yourself a car or you're, you're, rent, you're, you're leasing a vehicle. You can either take standard mileage rate or, or your actual expenses. So there's quite a bit that goes into it, and we'll be very happy to help you. So, And there's no charge for the consultation. Well, Mrs. Goliath, I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking my call. All right. Thanks, congratulations. Tim, for calling. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. That's great and to see somebody enter the job market again. That's so important. Our number is 632-7886. Oh, yeah. And our website is egtax.com. And you can anybody can uh, go on our website and ask the tax lady uh, a question, and I'm happy to answer it anytime. Don't forget you can go there and register for our super seminar What's the buzz in, in October 13th? Okay, the other thing is I'm going to talk about rental property really quick. If you have a second home, it's not going to be deductible. So your taxes are not going to be deductible. Your interest is not going to be deductible unless you turn it into a rental property. And I want to tell you something that's many of you are only using your rental property maybe a month, a year, and it's sitting vacant. I will tell you, think about converting it to rental property. You get the income in, you're going to get the pass-through deduction, and it's all deductible, and it's uh, good. And again, we'll help you with that. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Until next week, we hope you have a great week. Uh, join us on our, our website, egtax.com. Till next week, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.